if there were a secret uh, that I could bottle and sell, um, I wouldn't have to be looking for more retirement income. But uh, I, I know a lot of things that have worked for me over a number of years. Um, and it's, it's because of what happened to me in my own career. Um, when, when I started, and in fact, uh, I was just talking about this, uh, when I started out, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I fell into a, a position, um, did it for 13 years, got tired of it, uh, looked in the want ads in the paper for another position, uh, took one, uh, thinking that I would probably uh, uh, just be there for a short while. I fell in love with it. Uh, I stayed there for a while, and then I uh, that place closed, so I needed another job. I looked in the want ads in the paper. I found another job, thinking I was only going to be there for a short while. I fell in love with it, and I've been at the University of Cincinnati ever since. And what happened to me in each of those positions that made me love it and stay with it as long as I possibly could was the fact that I was appreciated and valued. They let me know that. They gave me opportunities to grow. Uh, I think if, if, if I had felt trapped at some point, like, oh, if I'd been slotted as that box office woman, which I was for a while, by the way. I was a box office woman. I hired the kids that uh, ran the box office at the College Conservatory of Music. Uh, had somebody thought of me as that box office woman and not given me a chance that they gave me uh, to be a teacher and an associate dean and uh, uh, I would have not been at the College Conservatory of Music for, th for the 32 years that I've been part of it. Uh, it. There's something about letting people know that you see what they can do and giving them a shot at doing it. Um, now, I'm, I'm one of those people, I'm a manager who actually has difficulty uh, doing something I think is really important and that is uh, allocating things off of my desk and here you take this and see what happens. Um, I think you have to know how to do that and I have had to discipline myself. I'm a, I'm a person that kind of holds on to things and tries to do too much at the same time and but I've learned that if I'll, uh, I'll stop being me and give that young person this big piece to do uh, and tell her I'll help her if she needs help, but basically, I trust you, I think you can handle it, um, she grows. And the job gets done better than I could have done it. And that's the kind of organization I always wanted to work in and have worked in. And that's the kind that I think all of us who have the opportunity to help young staff find good, good people and give them a shot at, uh, at doing big things. Um, they will, they'll reward you. I don't think there's anything more important. I don't, I think the people in the organization are the organization. Um, I remember years ago when I was teaching in the arts administration program here, uh, we invited, um, we invited any number of guest speakers to, who were in the profession uh, to come to Cincinnati and and talk to our students or we invited local people as well of course. The guy at the time who was running uh, the Aspen Music Festival came one year and um, I hadn't thought about this in years but your your question prompts it. Um, he said, when the kids ask him, I say kids, I mean these are graduate students, ask him oh, wh what do you what do you do? What What's your job? Uh, and he said you know what I do? 90% of the time I'm sitting in my office meeting with or talking with one of the staff people and trying to help them do what they're doing well or listening to their problems. Uh, I help them with their families. Uh, I just connect to them as human beings. But mainly what we're, we're after is a working relationship built on trust and a bond about what we're trying to get done for the music festival. And I spend most of my time just talking to my people. Now, does that mean that he, that he doesn't have financial problems to deal with 
and scheduling problems and production issues and who's who's in who's mad at who and uh, what are we going to do when we when the uh, the person we thought we had coming in for the weekend uh, can't make it for the concert? What are we going to do? That's what I'm talking with my people about, and they're helping me figure it out. I'm I'm a people person, and he said I think that's what he told my students. I think that's the quality that you have to find in yourself if you want to be a top level manager. One of the jobs that I had before I came to the conservatory that I, I mentioned I was there for three years was a small community-based arts organization located in the predominantly African-American project area, very low income area in Cincinnati, down on Lynn Street in the West End. Anybody here knows, knows uh, Cincinnati knows about it. It was a Johnson era project to infuse arts into the lower income communities in this country. And I think the Arts Consortium was one of the first. When I took that job, I had, took a serious cut in pay. I, if you wanted to know why, I would be off the subject. Uh, it, I, I was in a temporary kind of position, feeling my way, as I said earlier. Um, I took a job I wasn't sure I could do, uh, and immediately uh, I knew when I interviewed for that job that they needed me, that I had something I could do for them. Um, I interviewed because I was interested in what the Arts Consortium was. When I found out what they paid, um, of course I blinked, but I could see uh, what that organization was, what it stood for, how I fit, uh, and what, they, what, what I could do that, that I knew I, I could help them. I knew who I was and that I could give them something. And we hit, hit it off just like that. And I, had, I made the decision overnight that I would take that pay cut. And of course, what happened is, as I said earlier, uh, they elevated me. I got a little pay raise. I never got much there. I can't remember what I, the top salary I made might have been four thousand more than what I started at. Uh, but I, f I was feeding on the appreciation and the excitement uh, that I was feeling for being able to do what they were letting me do. And um, I didn't leave there because of the salary. I left there for other reasons that had again we'd be off the subject. Uh, I left there uh, because it was an organization that uh, couldn't sustain. I, I've, I actually think you can't control much of anything. Uh, um, frankly, figuring out how to find people uh, is, I guess, the hardest thing. How do you, how do you reach out in a way that attracts the kind of person that you want to hire. And the way I did it in the old days, I think I mentioned, I actually was looking in the want ads in the paper. Now we look at Craigslist or something like that and we find jobs that way. That doesn't work very well. Uh, it brings you a flood of people that most of whom are not qualified. Uh, it, it puts you in a position, now I'm not saying don't do it, but boy, you don't have any control over it. You have none. Um, it's in the weeding through all that flood of stuff that comes to you because the job market's tight and people need jobs. So you're going to get a lot of people that uh, you, can't, you can't use and you, you want to find a kind way to let them know that and, uh, and then get down to the few people that you can sit with for a long time and try to figure out who they are. Um, I don't know. I don't know that you can't, you can't control much of anything. Frequently you don't know until the hire has been made. When I used to teach, uh, I used to teach a nonprofit law course, I would tell my students to do something that I frankly find very hard to do myself. Uh, 
and that is put, uh, hire people in a probationary period uh, so that they're, they have three months. You, almost, you know almost immediately whether you found the right person. It doesn't take very long. Three months is giving them a lot of time to work with you to see if they can correct the problems that you probably saw the first week they were there or the second week. Um, so if you have people in a probationary period where they have accepted the fact coming in that you're going to give them every bit of help you possibly can, uh, but you're not tied in right now, boy, I found that hard to do. I taught it. But it sure is, it's very hard to do because then you lose the person that you wanted because they are not going to, they, they, they are afraid to take a job where they are in a probationary period. Uh, so how do you find the right person? When, when I fell in love with each of the jobs that I've talked to you about, I, I, w I was given a lot of time by each of the people that hired me. They spent time with me before, while we were in the interview process. I met a lot of people in the organization. Um, now, I was at this point, I'm a finalist, you get it. I mean, they're not doing this for everybody. They're doing it with the people that they, they think really this is the potential. And they're trying to decide, is it that person or this person? And they're spending, they're, we went to dinner. Uh, I might, in one case, I even went over to somebody's house. Uh, I had a, an opportunity to visit all the areas in the organization, know what it was about, and I was with people who were watching me, watching what I, what I did. Now I've done that many, many times in making hires myself and been pretty darn lucky. And I, I, it all goes back to people, that's all. And is this, is this a person that you just feel that, that magic with? Uh, and it works most of the time, but frankly, it's a crapshoot. <laughs> it's like I was saying a few minutes ago to someone, you just, to you actually, you just, uh, it's like uh, the difference between dating and living together, and you don't know till you live together. And uh, so I wish I had been able to do what I taught my students to do, but the problem with there is it, 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 it frequently is when you lose your best person but do it if you can. Well, I think you're doing the right thing here. Um, as I understand it, you're interviewing a number of people who've done a lot of hiring and been hired themselves and uh, lived through a lot of employment issues. And it's, it's very kind of you to do this, and I think it's the right thing to do. And if I can ever help anybody out there uh, who would like me to just uh, talk on the phone sometime about a problem you're having with it. Uh, I hope you'll let me know. Thanks a lot, Tim. <laughs>